Okay, this is part two. We're just going to do um, three more examples. This top information is still exactly the same as the last problem we did. Um, now the question says, if we take a simple random sample of 50 cars from the fleet, what's the probability that um, x bar, I should, that should say x bar, is greater than 56,000? Um, okay, the last problem we did, remember how that was a single car? Now we're talking about a simple random sample of 50 cars. So that is the value of n. n is 50 now. Okay, so if we go back and do our formulas, the mean of um, all of our sample means should equal the mean of the population, which was given to us. It was 55,000. The standard deviation of all of our sample means equals the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. The population standard deviation was given to us, 4,500. Now our n value is 50, so now we have to divide by the square root of 50. And this standard deviation now is 636.396. That's our new standard deviation. Okay, well, we want to find the probability that x bar probability that x bar is greater than 56,000. All right, well, we need to find a z-score. So let's do some z-score work. So we take 56,000 minus our mean of 55,000, divide by the standard deviation, which is 636.396. The only reason in that last problem, the only reason the standard deviation was the same was because our sample size was a 1. It was a single random car. Now, um, now it's 50 cars. So that's why our standard deviation changed so much. Okay, when you compute the Z, you get 1.57. So going back to our probability statement, we want the probability that x bar is greater than 56,000. That will equal the probability that our z score is greater than 1.57. So look up 1.57, and since it's a greater than, we have to do 1 minus. So look up 1.57, and I believe it's 0.9418. And 1 minus 0 0.9418 should be 0 0.0582. And that's the answer to the question. That's the probability that x bar is greater than 56,000. Which means, like if we went back to this last question, that's the probability that the brake pad lasts more than that many miles. Here, I'll write it out in words. This is the probability. Whoops. So the probability that the mean of the samples um the here how do i want to say that the mean um brake pad lifetime of the samples is more than 56,000 miles.
whoops, <laughs> Millie's, ah, the pen that I have to write with is kind of, ugh. All right, M-I-L-E-S, there, Miles, okay. All right, next question. Same information at the top. Now it says, would your answer to either A or B change if the distribution of brake pads is not normal? So go back to the original problem. Oops, actually I have it copied. Okay, um, here, up in the original problem it says that um, it, it varies from car to car according to a normal distribution. They told us it was normal. What if they didn't? What if they left this part out? Okay, so what if we didn't, what if it wasn't normal? Would our answer to part A change? Well, go back to this idea of the central limit theorem. If we're taking a simple random sample from any population, then our sample size has to be big. It has to be like at least 30. So in, oops, in part A, is our sample size at least 30? No, our sample size was one. So that's a big deal. So, um, our answer to part A would change because our sample size is only one. Um, central limit theorem would not apply. Because the central limit theorem says, well, if your sample size is 30 or more, then it's approximately normal. Well, we only had a sample size of one. That's too small. So if, if our distribution is distinctly not normal, our sample size is not big enough to kick it into normal. Okay, but would our answer to part B change? Well, look at part B. What was the sample size? 50. It's bigger than 30. So part B would not change because our sample size was larger than 30. So the central limit theorem applies something to that effect. Even Here's what I would say, even if the, um, even if the population distribution is not normal, our, um, our sampling distribution would be. So the general idea is even if what your even if your population is doesn't look normal or you don't have any information about it being normal, if your sample size is larger than 30, then your sampling distribution will be approximately normal. Okay. Next question. Same information at the top. Here's where it's different. What sample size would be needed to reduce the standard deviation of x bar to be less than 500? 
This is almost identical to the last question we did in class yesterday. Um, it's just that the formula is different. The standard deviation of x bar is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Well, we need to solve for n, so let's put stuff in. We want our standard deviation to be less than 500 and our population standard deviation is 4,500 and we need to figure out what n should be. So we're going to solve for n. So cross multiply, put that over 1 and cross multiply, 500 times the square root of n would equal 4,500. Okay, divide 4,500 by 500, and you get a 9. Now, be careful, n is not 3. Is the square root of 3 9? No. You'd have to square both sides to get n alone. Uh, so, n would equal 81. Now, just be careful, remember that side note from yesterday, we want our standard deviation to be less than 500, so should we have a bigger number than 81 or a smaller number than 81? Should we round this up or down if we want our standard deviation to be less than 500? Well, in math, the bigger your denominator is, the smaller your answer will be. So we want n to be bigger. So we're going to round up to 82. Eighty-two will make our standard deviation smaller than five hundred. Eighty-one makes it exactly equal to five hundred. Eighty-two would make it less than five hundred. Okay. Um so You've watched both parts of the videos. Um, I'm going to put up the answer keys to homework 1, 2, and 3 for you to check. Um, the homework is in the book. It's homework number 4. So homework number 4 is page 454. And it's 50, 52, 56... 59 and 64. That's your homework for tonight. Um, and then if you can keep working on the review packet for the final, that would be good. And then um, the only other thing is um, on our haiku page, uh, there's a link on the left side for the course evaluation. It, it's a link to a Google Doc where um, it's like a survey that you can just um, click your way through and it shouldn't take you very long at all. So if you could do that course evaluation too, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. So uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Okay,